Hello scholars, welcome, Mr. Hinkle here. Today we are talking about mineral chemistry because this is the bridge between the definition of a mineral and identifying what a mineral is. So, quick review. A mineral is a substance that is naturally occurring from geologic processes, inorganic, solid, with a chemical composition and definite crystalline structure of which the chemistry comes in. So, identify minerals as having a chemical formula created through chemical bonds of elements is our objective. Let's go. Minerals have a chemical composition, meaning they have a chemical formula. Plagioclase feldspar, sodium, aluminum, silicone, oxygen, muscovite, potassium, aluminum, either silicone or aluminum, oxygen, and hydroxide. Garnet could be magnesium, iron, manganese, aluminum, silicone, oxygen, olivine, magnesium, iron, silicone, oxygen. The way that elements bonds creates different types of minerals. This is why the mineral chemistry is important. It starts with the fundamental unit of matter, the atom. Now, the atom has protons and neutrons inside of its nucleus. This is a basic chemistry review. And electrons that are floating around it in the electron cloud. This is true for all atoms. Protons, neutrons, electrons. The protons have a positive charge, the neutrons are neutral, and the electrons have a negative charge. And it is these charges that leads to chemical bonding. But first, we want to discuss the periodic table of the elements. Very simplified version of it, right? This is chemistry from a geologist's perspective, so if I'm not going in depth, bear with me. But here is the basics that I know. The periodic table of elements is arranged by number. And these, it's more complex than that, but each element has a number. Hydrogen is one, carbon is six, silicone is 14. And that number, or atomic number, is how many protons are inside of the nucleus. So hydrogen has one proton. Every atom with one proton is a hydrogen element. Carbon has six protons. Every atom with six protons is the element carbon. This is the definition of how we have different elements. Now, the periodic table gives you an atomic number. The number of neutrons added to the number of protons gives you the atomic mass, and this will change over time. Important for radioactive decay in how we put radiometric age dates on geologic materials. It's how do we put the age of rocks. This rock is 2.5 billion years old. How do you know that? The rocks tell us, and they tell us because of the chemistry and our understanding of radioactive decay. Check out my uh, lecture on geologic time for that one. So, of the 118 known elements in that table I just showed, 92 are natural, the other two are able to be synthesized in laboratory settings. Eight elements are abundant in Earth's crust. Oxygen, the most abundant, 47. Silicone, the next most. Silicone and oxygen make up 75% of most, 75% uh, of the elements in Earth's crust. They form the mineral group, the silicates, which um, are about 90% of all minerals on Earth. And it makes sense. If you want to make a broccoli cheddar soup, you put in broccoli, you put in cheddar, you get those ingredients to mix with each other, and boom. Same thing with elements and rocks, metaphorically speaking. We've got aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, and then all the others, 1.5%. So eight elements forming the bulk of all of 
our minerals on in Earth's crust. Elements bond with each other. And there's three types of bonds. Ionic, which is the exchange of electrons. We'll use sodium, NaCl. So Na is sitting over here with its electrons. Cl is sitting over here with its electrons. Sodium will give up an electron. Cl will take that and it will bond them together. It's kind of a sweet thing. There's also covalent, where two elements will share electrons that will bond them together. And then metallic, this is in metals, copper, silver, zinc, these kind of things, where elements, copper will just repeat it, and there will be a free flow of electrons through all of the coppers. So three types of chemical bonds, ionic, covalent, and metallic. Let's use salt, sea salt. The NAs and the CLs, you can see here, are different sizes because of the different amounts of protons in their nucleus. And it is those different sizes and the way that they ionically bond that creates the crystal structure and gives it a chemical formula. Two of the required five characteristics for minerals. Natural, inorganic, solid, crystalline structure, chemical composition. So the Na's, the sodiums, and the Cl's, right? The Na loses one, or it gives an electron to the Cl. So they each have a charge. Plus one, minus one, this bonds the two. And when you have sodium chloride, these form the mineral halite, which is table salts. Uh, this is chemical bonding in action. The way that they bond gives it, so here's the formula, and the way that they bond gives it a crystal structure. The chemistry is very important for the mineralogy. Now we go back to the slide that I had the first time in the chemical formulas. Elements are chemically bonded to each other, creating a chemical formula that in turn provides a shape or a structure to that specific mineral. We can see they all have different structures. Minerals are composed of elements. These elements join together via chemical bonds and chemical bonds create minerals with a specific formula. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture that this bridges the gap between the definition and the identification. Because of these specific properties in the crystal structure through the chemical bonds, minerals have physical traits, physical characteristics, of which we can perform tests to identify. So we can actually name and uh, distinguish one mineral from the other. So minerals have chemistry, that chemistry is structured, and that structured chemistry allows for physical uh, or mineral identification of physical characteristics. Thank you so much. We'll see you again in the next one on mineral identification.